It's really like nature communicates through us with these plants, with these molecules. But it's not only the DMT then obviously, but it's like this, this whole cocktail of things. So a little bit of a different episode today. We're going to be talking about nootropics, creating flow states and different forms of, uh, of biohacking. I'm really excited to be joined today by Maurice Neuwirth. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. <laughs> I've been doing my best to sound a bit German. Um, it's really lovely to have you here today, Maurice. So firstly, a very warm welcome to the show. Yeah, Angela, thank you. Thank you for having me. Really excited to talk about this because I know from hearing your podcast, you're excited about these topics as much as I am. So let's have some fun here today. Yeah, let's do that. I am. I'm very excited about these topics because it's something that I am constantly playing with myself, actually trying to physically, you know, Tony Robbins talks about creating a new state and the way that the body interacts with the mind. And I truly believe you, you can't separate them. They are integrated. And sometimes that when you're having a hard time with your thoughts and trying to clear them, actually moving your body and being quite physical is one of the best ways to do that. And it's definitely something that's helped me tremendously over the years. And, and so physical activity is a really big part of my life. But at the same time, we can also enter different mental states. And that's something I've been playing with. So we're going to dive into all of those uh, today. But first of all, just just introduce yourself a little bit so the listeners can get to know you, your background. We were talking before the show that you're a bit of a nomad. Now you've kind of settled down a little bit, but just give us a quick intro and how you got into this area of being a flow strategist. Yeah. Yeah, the two parts really, like the, the major part, maybe even through personal health struggles. At my first kind of near death experience with six weeks old, I had the, the baby, a surgery. When I was two and a half years old, the doctors told my parents because I had some inflammation in my knee that I would never be able to walk. And then a lot of struggles with breathing, with autoimmune disease, Hashimoto, all these kinds of things. And then going into the gym I was like, okay, I want to improve my body because I also had crappy body composition. And yeah, so I had to learn and learn and learn. That's where the interest from my side came into place because just like learning about nutrition, learning about the body. And that's really the other side. And my academic background is then much from the, the business world. So I studied mechanical engineering. That's where the systems thinking came. Business analytics, worked as a consultant. But then through plant medicine, it kind of connected me to like, ah, this is not the way. And then I went shut into the entrepreneurial part started with um, traveling around, creating content about the, the things that I'm truly passionate about, which branched out from the, from the just purely body, physical health things to a lot of these things that we talked about, meditation, breath work, really understanding the, the body and mind on a, on a deeper level. And yeah, then sharing my knowledge, then now with having the podcast, the Entrepreneurial Brain Podcast, where, where I talk about similar things yeah, like you awesome. and, and just going this this route and really following my passion in my entrepreneurial endeavors and then helping people what i call myself my workflow strategist because it's really this this high performance thing of the flow state being productive but then also like this effortlessness bringing keeping connected mm -hmm. to your intuition and having this kind of yin and yang these are the two both sides that i really is kind of the unique thing about my work because in the high performance world very many are like, ah, young, 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 let's try to optimize that. And sometimes the, the yin side can fall off the bandwagon and trying to keep that playfulness, that effortlessness in our life. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. And I think, um, you know, I've noticed as well, like if you, the, the expression goes that force negates. And I think if you push, 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 and you're very left brain thinking, it mm -hmm. can really impact your creativity. And it's something, you know, I'm a recovering lawyer. So it was very left brain, my previous mm -hmm. career. And, you know, everything was about being perfect. Otherwise, you're going to get sued. If you, if you screw up on a contract, you know, things can go really badly wrong, particularly when you're working with, you know, companies worth billions of dollars. Um, but I think as, an, as entrepreneurs, it's a, a unique, um, unique set of skills that you need, really, because you do need to be gunning and pushing ahead. That's the thing, isn't it? You do need to be motivated. You need to be on your A game. But at the same time, you have to be a true visionary and you have to have that creativity and that flow. And I think this is where um, the ability to be flexible and have that effortlessness that you're speaking of and change mental states is so powerful. Um, do you have a kind of routine that you do in the morning when you wake up to prime your mental state? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the morning and the evening, these are most likely the, the most important points that we really have to take care of because in the evening, it's when our brain like kind of prepares and goes into sleep. So if you're in your bed feeding social media, that's what the last things you're feeding and that's what you're processing. And in the morning, the same, if you're feeding input, that's, that's just random input from social media, that's where your brain goes. 
So in the morning, I really like to start with outer walk. So really first the biological thing, getting in that sunlight, getting some movement, activating the body, cold shower, although that varies a bit because I'm also doing now a lot of surfing. So there, there the flexibility already comes in. So it's the having some structure, um, but also some flexibility that I really found for me um aids the, the entire thing and then yeah what i said movement is essentially gratitude journaling and then also setting up the day so in the morning like saying what what are my goals what is my intention but then also this gratitude component is really so essential of just starting the day and really not just writing these things down but then we're coming into like already embodiment like really dropping into that feeling and sensing it and feeling it that's where the, the true benefits of gratitude really are if you really connect to that feeling so yeah, these are I think the the, the core pillars. There are core always pillars. some some yeah. components that are changing. But and I find the breath actually is an amazing segue into entering these states. Um, it's quite interesting because when you do something like Wim Hof style or like soma breathing that my my friend Niraj developed with music, anything like that that's really kind mm. of rhythmic in nature just charges the body's energy so dramatically but i find that whether you then follow it with breath holds or not once you've done like say 10 20 30 breaths in that rhythmic flow you ideally right you're heading for 30 uh that seems to be the consistent number across all these even tony robbins with his with his priming will use 30. actually then just sitting and then focusing on gratitude and entering into the mm. feeling of gratitude is really transformational. Cause I used to write out, I love the five minute journal. I'm a huge fan of it. But sometimes when you just write out gratitude, I find it can become quite routine. Um, and you're almost not entering it fully into the feeling. Whereas when you use the breath to sort of charge your mind first, uh, and then use that as that segue into that state where you're just feeling the gratitude, something kind of transformational really happens have you have you sort of played around with different breathwork techniques uh, as part of your routine yeah definitely that's actually one major component that i kind of forgot it, the last few months like i did wim hof kind of style breathwork every morning and i coupled that with a meditation app which i really like it's called syncuition which is like a oh, audio, yes. audio track that. and then with binaural beats. and not sure if you heard about the apollo neuro which is kind of a variable device which has one setting for meditation and mindfulness. So that's like with the, the combination of the Wim Hof and the intuition and this physical, it's like this little bracelet which vibrates and it basically helps you to connect to that state. So that's what I do usually in the morning also, like in, in 90%. And that's really has been impactful because and with different breath thoughts, that's also like 20, 30 as a, as a range, that's nice. But there also comes the, the individual component. Like it's really that I've learned over the time, like listening to my body. Some days I can, if, especially if I'm more relaxed, I can maybe even do, do just 15 or 20 and already have like a nice breath hold. And some it's better for me to like, oh, I really feel like some 30 or 40. And then because that's what I really, I, I noticed, um, I mentioned in the beginning, I had some struggles also with my breath, deviated septum, a lot of... Um, breathing issues which then led to kind of overbreathing, which I later found out and then in, during the night it still sometimes happens like combinate I think also with some stress anxiety just breathing too much and in the beginning of the day then I noticed like oh my breathing is a bit off and I could see like if I start the breath hold I only can get like maybe 30 seconds or so and after the Wim Hof it's really like this recalibration and then I'm in this more balanced state and can do like one minute or 90 seconds like really more and that's like the, the beauty if i do that in the beginning of the day it kind of recalibrates my my breathing so that's the other part the, the one major component as you notice it really really helps to connect to that gratitude state but also to this like true meditative state almost as i would call it if you're really just the self if all of the the thoughts are where the sense of self vanishes mm -hmm. and you're really this I mean, for me, plant medicine really taught me to how the state looks like, how this true meditative state looks like. But Wim Hof is, besides the plant medicine, the, 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 the thing that I really would recommend people to really get to know the state because I think it's really... Mm -hmm works with the body and mind we're back to the thing everything yeah i mean i think as, as you said i think it, you know he talks doesn't he about how you can get high on your own supply mm. and really teaches you to do that and after you've kind of fully oxygenated and then you do that out breath just for people listening maybe who don't understand it and you do or haven't tried it yet should i say so far and you do the breath hold because normally people think well breath hold is when you've just taken in a deep breath and you're holding it here actually you're doing an exhalation and then holding 
Um, and uh, I've measured it actually. I don't know if you've done this. It's quite fun to get a pulse oximeter on and see how your blood oxygen drops uh, and, and, and kind of quite how lightheaded you get. I haven't experimented yet with, with plant medicine, but I can imagine that that is, uh, as, you, as you said there, I'm just picking up what you're saying, quite interesting that it can really show you what that meditative state is. Where have you done that? Because I know there's some places in Northern Europe actually that you can go um, and do this specifically in centers where they're quite well supervised for your own experience. Is that something you've done in a kind of quasi medical center or have you done it, you know, on your own out in the in the wilderness somewhere? <laughs> First, to, to answer the point, like, yeah, it's definitely you can get high on your own supply. And I'm not actually aware of studies, I think 2019, where they proved, I think it was a red study, that DMT is produced in the in the brain before people said it. And Wim Hof also said, like, Wim Hof, it's your own DMT, but it was more like anecdotal and more like the science is trying to catch up, uh, be catching up. So that's really interesting. And the, maybe even more interesting, it was in similar amounts like serotonin, which is one of the major neurotransmitters. So we're just beginning to understand like these neurotransmitters, which are in us and DMT, that's the, the active component of ayahuasca, which is a brew from the Amazonian, like from the jungle. And you have to combine two plants and cook them together, which always, when I think about it, it's, it's kind of mind blowing that connectedness. It's really like nature communicates through us with these plants, with these molecules, but it's not only the DMT then obviously, but it's like this this whole cocktail of things and yeah I, I my my start was like with with mushrooms psilocybin mushrooms in germany like the f first time was kind of um just out of enjoyment like i started with drugs quite late like i was only drinking alcohol in germany i was like ah it's unhealthy i'm, I'm, I'm a good engineer i'm just drinking but when i started looking into it i became interested when i was like oh there's actually even positive benefits especially in my case when what i shared like very early childhood trauma six week olds and then very disconnected like i was always i'm just someone who doesn't feel emotions very much like very closed on but super you mentioned before left brain like now i'm crazy creative i would say like i'm on the very end with like openness like my adhd kind of dyslexic brain i'm always seeing this connection and these things and before i was so closed on and yeah, that's where my journey began and really exploring these things. So they actually, Big Five is one of the personality tests and openness to new experiences is one of the five dimensions. It's like the gold standard, which measures kind of your creativity, how much are you willing to engage in your ideas? And just one dose of like medium dose psilocybin has been shown to um, increase that by one standard deviation, which is statistic statistically very significant. So it's like huge changes that you can... Um, Permanent changes. With them permanent changes exactly. yeah. yeah interesting yeah. so that's where um, my entry point but then now here in portugal i also experienced like the traditional because it's very connected to the amazonian river it's kind of decriminalized so you have a lot of um, people working with the native transitions and that's the beauty not only with the the plant medicine ceremonies itself but also the wisdom of the natives so connecting with the elements connecting with nature and even things like gratitude they're just embodied in their practices they even things like cacao ceremonies which is not necessarily about the plant but it's just about this coming together and often you have the cup it gets passed around you get one cup you have the receiving and then you give it further and you have to have this connectedness that's embodied into these practices so it's it's really really powerful if you do it in the in the way the natives do it. And there are even these little subtleties, like the, these songs, and it's like often bodily noises and sounds. So like the, the, the wisdom is in the body and you can't even put it into to words to a large degree. So it's, it's really incredible and it helped me, it helped me tremendously. Like mushrooms were actually the, the factor that helped me get out of the consultant world where my inner voice was so shut down, which was just telling me like, ah, it's, it's not the path. But then uh, the rational left brain was like, oh, you spent all these years studying. Now you have that well-paying consultant job. But my, my soul was like crying, but it was so suppressed. And that the mushrooms were kind of the, yeah, connecting me to my body so that from there it could flourish. But in combination, which is always important with then the breath work, the meditation, the exposure in age. It's not the, the, the simple magic pill, like the we in our medical systems often you go there you take it and it's done but more so nudges you and what's also very interesting about psychedelics that they're actually anti-inflammatory very anti-inflammatory so that's where some of the proposed benefits of microdosing come into play because it really helps your body to help especially chronic inflammation which is a, a big problem in our society
And specifically, which mushrooms are you thinking about here? Uh, psilocybin mushrooms. There's the, there are very many strains: golden teachers, B plus. There, there, there's tons and tons. But there, the the main active ingredient is always psilocybin. But then the nuances are really nuanced. Some people mm -hmm. are more like in strengths. Obviously, it's very a lot if you have an outdoor ground, if you have an in ground. So it always depends a little bit on the strain. But the way they act, it's as as far as we know, it's a the 5-HDA receptor. So it's very much on the serotonin system. It's really, that's what boosting creativity a lot because it's really just neurons that fire together, wire together. I'm sure you're aware of that. Mm. And so we have these neural pathways that are always active and active and active, and we keep using these. And what then um, psychedelics in general do, like they just increase the connectedness by a lot. So mm. areas you can, for example, smell colors or see things. It's like this, everything blurs together, but that's at the same time, it just opens you up to seeing this new perspective. It's like being a child again, really on multiple things. And yeah, that's how it can be powerful, but it can also, the, the really important disclaimer, it's what you really asked in the beginning. It's really important to inform yourself and to really have that safe space, that safe container, because especially with trauma, it just brings these things up. If you're not prepared, if you not have someone to help with the integration, which is maybe even the, at least 50%, maybe even more important than the experience itself, then it can also go in the wrong direction. If you just bring up these things from your subconscious, from your body, um, yeah, it can go badly. So it's really important to inform yourself, to find that safe container, that safe space, because feeling safe, one of the things I, I've learned before I even was triggered, like ah, feeling safe, like safe space, everyone's talking about it. I was always in this go, go, go mode. But then, yeah, realizing it's, it's really, really important for your body to truly, because that's maybe the, the key thing that I noticed what was going wrong. I was always in the sympathetic um, nervous system, fight or flight, always going, going, going and using these biohacks to kind of put band-aids on these things to like keep going at that momentum. But what was really needed to really drop also in that, into that um, parasympathetic state of just feel safe, feel relaxed, recharge, mm. and then be able to, to go into that doing mode again that's maybe yeah so it's almost like building in uh recovery cycles but it's interesting as well because i guess would you say to people when if they if they were thinking about trying it is to sort of microdose and work up slowly uh and also be with somebody as you say who can create that safe space because there's there's very um interesting research isn't there around how you were talking there about serotonin and about how plant medicines can actually really help people who are suffering with depression and anxiety long term uh, and there's a huge amount going research going into this now uh, to to sort of legalize this in in with certain doctors to be able to help um did you it, it, where, where did you try this obviously you've traveled a lot um, and how did you get started in it because for people to avoid things coming up too quickly that maybe could actually overwhelm them uh, if they're not in the right setting yeah yeah i think microdosing is definitely an amazing place to start because what microdosing is it's sub perceptual dosing so you're really not taking that much that you really feel these different but it's really nuances and there's like a protocol so you do it there are different protocols but it's usually with microdosing it's three or four times a week usually and it's best you need really you need to have a container you need to be mindful these are the days that i'm taking it journaling over it and it's it's bringing up it's not so much bringing up these things then but really just first in, in raising your capacity to feel things and that's what mindfulness in a sense also does what you're doing is like ah listening to your interoception, to your bodily perceptions, to your bodily feelings. And through that, it's the anti-inflammatory component that's also helping a lot, but our science is so close to that. But then also it's nudging you. It's, as I said, it's working on, it's a non-specific state amplifier. So antidepressants in general, they work by re, um, by reuptake inhibition of serotonin. So just increasing the amount of serotonin that's in your system. Psychedelics, they, they non-specific state amplifier. So what's already there, they're bringing it up. You feel it more. And that sense, um, classical antidepressants are critical because they can be, again, short and banned at, and in some cases they might be necessary, but they also blunt your ability to move out of that state because you then have more serotonin, so you feel content. You feel okay where you're at. Whereas psychedelics, they are just enabling you to change with the increase of um, neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity, BDNF increase, similar like lion's mane, which is a powerful combination, by the way, to um, 
What, also, what what's a powerful combo? Lion's, lion's mane, lion's mane with... with psychedelics in general because it also yeah. increases speed and F. It helps you with that recalibration of the yeah. neurons. And nerve growth factor as well, doesn't yeah. it? But it's interesting what you're factor. saying there because I found from my own experience of having taken uh, a lot of uh, antidepressant medication but also antipsychotic medication when I was sick, um, I found that over time, as you, it, it, sometimes it's necessary to do the work or it seems, but now there are growing other alternatives. Uh, and definitely I had to do the work on myself. But what I found was when you no longer, or you feel like you no longer need the medication, there is a definite numbness to feelings and sensations. As you say, that's when I felt contained, right? It's almost like, okay, fine. I don't feel depressed anymore, but now I can't feel really, really happy either mm. because it's just creating this constant uniform state which i found very difficult and uh it was it, it was kind of counter to medical advice actually that i ever came off them but it was my big dream to cut to come off the meds um what i have found when you were talking about brains you know neurons that wire together uh, that fire together wire together is very much that these pathways can become incredibly entrenched and so mm. i know from my own experience recently having been off medication now for sort of two and a half years uh my father very sadly passed away a, a month or so ago uh or six weeks ago and that has been a very challenging uh experience for me mentally i don't just mean in terms of the grief that i felt and that sense of loss it has challenged the very fiber of mm. the, my being effectively what i built uh built back through practices like breath work and meditation and gratitude to really and physical exercise to a degree to really buffer myself and enhance that serotonin and i've used things like lion's mane um, but I think you become aware when you have an experience like that of your own vulnerability. And I think I liken it to a, a cornfield, you know, if you're walking through and there's lots of like very long grass and people have trodden a path, it's like that with the brain. And there's this very worn down path, uh, which is very easy for the brain to slip into. And that can happen if you've experienced things like depression or anxiety, because it's a kind of negative path, if you like, but it's very well trodden. And I think often we'll go to places that are familiar um, because they're comfortable, even though they're uncomfortable in many respects, because they're not how you want to feel, but it's very difficult to then forge that new pathway, which is to let the weeds grow up over the old one. And, and that can no longer now be taken down. You, you don't go down that path anymore and to forge a new positive path. And it sounds from the more I'm reading, uh, and it's definitely an area that I'm looking at researching more and understanding, but it dovetails with your own experience that actually plant medicine seems to be a very quick way to forge that new path. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. That's why we also have, I think there are people who are wanting to quit smoking and that in combination, again, it's the combination of like the plant medicine, mushrooms. I think they even do uh, the, the, the micro, low dose kind of regimen. But then that opens you up to see like, ah, I see these these alternatives and then make these changes. That's again, also with the micro dosing. It's not so much only the substance that you're taking, but through that, you then suddenly you, ah, I can do that to sleep better. I can do that. These are the improvements I want to make. And it helps you to do these changes. It helps you to connect to your intuition because our body, in many cases, we already know what we should or shouldn't be doing, but it's so hard because it's so entrenched, these factors. So that's why with things like addiction, depression, where it's like change, where there are the actual changes that we need to make, like so much of the depression, I would say is also by the there's the biological component in some cases no doubt about doubt no doubt about it but it's often like our circumstances but we are just trapped in these things so like seeing these these opportunities and then having these these the, the, the little the little push to get out of our normal ways of doing things the little push to see the the alternative and then execute on it that's really what what all we need sometimes and that what they provide so in terms of addiction that's why i'm so passionate about it while i really want to keep working with um, working with them because they, they can help so much and especially this approach of not like ah it's the pill that helped you but it's just this, this thing that helps you help yourself because our body mm. they have such an incredible healing capacity which has has been forgotten by by big time so that's the mm. ancient wisdom it's just like nature yeah. giving us these these lessons so it's always like mind blow mind blowing and humbling for us what what is provided not only when i'm speaking of plant medicine i'm also passionate about it, so many other things 
lemon balm in terms of calming a stone, chamomile for sleep. There's been just recently a study, I think even Andrew Huberman popularized it, like one of the one of the constituents in chamomile, which has been shown to like really improve sleep quality and Shilijit, like just to, to rumble a few of the things, which is the, the blood of the mountains in the Himalaya, which is like very diverse. So like old forests pressed together through tectonic movements coming out of the um, thing, which basically contains all minerals. So also trace minerals like boron, which boron, which has been become depleted, which is, for example, for testosterone, very important, has become depleted in our soils and they're helping optimize testosterone hormones in general energy so, so nature really provides we, we talked about supplements briefly but it's so incredible if you really do have you have because you have this this multitude of of components as i said it's the same with when we are talking about mushrooms it's psilocybin is the main component but it's just like this whole thing where we still have no idea how they all interact and how do they truly work into the body so so nature is as healing it's it's really powerful for me really powerful and uh, and it doesn't have uh, seemingly the kind of downtime afterwards as well because i think it's as you say it's opening up these pathways it's enabling you to to do the work and to grow in an area that you've been looking to grow and open up new areas of your thinking but without the the downsides that you have with antidepressants because i think the thing with them is what i found in my own experience and obviously it was a journey because the the doses i was taking were so high and there were multiple meds but coming off those then re puts you through the depressive experience because the withdrawal and you have to be so careful in coming off and really acknowledge the fact that you've got to be objective about it and think this is this is this is not who I am right this is a process that I'm going through to come off that medication um, and there is there are feelings of depression as you exit that and you just have to be gentle and kind with yourself and know that it's natural as you're doing it and I think with plant medicine we don't see that downside um, which can make it very difficult for people who take antidepressants ever actually to come off because you have to go through that that sort of barrier first yeah definitely I think that's maybe one of the the, the main benefits that you really don't have the same mechanism of action and actually it's it's not necessarily you can become addictive to them like you can become to anything but it's really not biological for example tolerance like raises very quickly if you take it the one one day the next day you already need to take double the amount and also it's not um yeah it's just like it's usually something you don't see it's or very rarely and then yeah as you said it's it's really this, this powerful the way of action mechanism of action it's not just that it keeps the serotonin there and but yeah it facilitates this change so that's really one of the the core benefits for sure mm, opening your mind and so what else with um in terms of like when you're working with entrepreneurs in terms of uh helping optimize their their mental and physical states obviously like the job of an entrepreneur involves so many different facets right you've got to be the ceo and actually involved in the running of the company but also with the the vision and everything you're creating there's such a creative component to it do you use sort of time blocking as a mechanism to help people do this so that it's like this is your creative time i was you know having a chat last week with dr greg potter around circadian rhythm and actually looking and we were discussing it's quite interesting because i'm such an early morning person it's almost like you've got to choose, well, is it going to be exercise I'm going to optimize at that time? Or is it actually because I'm so creative and able to access these states mm -hmm. in the morning? Do I focus on that? And I'm just curious from the work that you're doing, what you found so that, because really, I know that for me and many people listening is they just want to be able to access this flow state on demand whenever they want to. Um, what, what kind of tips and tricks do you have that people can use? Yeah, yeah. Time blocking, time blocking is definitely an maybe even the most important one in our today's world. But it's so common to have distractions. I think the average knowledge worker, I can't have it on my head to stat. What was it like, twenty or thirty minutes on average, in like a really deep focus? So that's maybe really the core problem that prevents us from dropping into the flow state because it's actually a cycle. Before you're dropping into the flow state, there's the the struggle phase where you really put yourself to something you're in the writing process you maybe have some hurdles and you also need the time to accumulate the knowledge to, to a certain degree but then if you reach that it's like this, this tension that first builds up and then it's like the, the release phase so from this from this intensity from the the the, the agitation the sympathetic activation you drop into that relaxation 
And that's when your brain actually the, the transient hypofrontality. So your frontal cortex then can be shut down, the part that controls it. And that enables our brain to have this free, free capacity. Usually we're already thinking of, oh, it's like only 10% of the brain gets used and I want to use 80. But it's actually less in that sense that you can shut down these parts that you don't need, um, use anymore. And then you get into that state of near perfect decision making. So yeah, time blocking is definitely super important. And also in the sense of, you mentioned before, individuality, bio-individuality, we need to be aware of when is the time that I'm actually with my highest energy. Usually in, for most people in the morning, it's good for, for like structured work, there's the focus. And actually in the evening, there's like a little bit less. Again, it comes back to the frontal cortex mm -hmm. with less of that control. So we are a little bit more open. So for creative work, it tends to be better a little bit in the evening, but that's, that's the individual component. So liberation through elimination and simplification is, is what we call it at the Flow Research Collective. It's super important to really always have this reflection process and think what it is that it truly matters to me in my work, in my life, to then eliminate a lot of the things. It's, even with entrepreneurs, we see it a lot, like you grow, you expand, and suddenly in terms of podcasting, for example, you have these other tasks that come up, like reaching out to the guests, uh, cutting the episodes maybe, and then hiring, outsourcing, and we always improving on that so that you can really have the time for your, for your key activities, because that's what enables us then to have these periods where we are into flow, really productive, and flow is an energy intensive state. Basically, mm -hmm. all neurotransmitters are transmitted. We have serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, um, acetylcholine, so everything is there. So after that, your brain obviously needs the time to recharge. And if we are then after our intensive stage, try to be there and keep improving processes and do more lead, lead gen, it's what in the end is made like, ah, oh, we did more work hours, but we are not at our peak productive. So that's one of the, the key things that's really need to be, um, yeah, sorted out. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I, and it's, it's a bit, and I find that actually the effort of your energy is appreciated so much more when you have entered into that state. So for example, like, you know, one of the things I love to to really hone my mind before is when I'm sending emails out, right, to, to people on my email list. I want to get that right. I want to be able to communicate the message. You're communicating through words. Sometimes I might include a video or, you know, a clip of a podcast, but other times it's really just trying to give them some value of how I can help them change an area of their, their health or their performance or their life and connecting with them. And I think that connection as, as over time, what I found is the more we can live consciously, the more we can enter this state all the time. And that's very similar to what you were saying about mindfulness, but that presence, when you are living consciously, everything, all the fight and the struggle, which often, let's be honest, is more of an inner struggle than an outward struggle uh, for most people because we battle with ourselves so much, um, that sort of falls away and everything does become more effortless. And I think then you can access those flow states, but also what I notice is, your connection with the other person is so much greater, whether that is through something like email, through a video, or whether, you know, I'm doing, I don't do as many of them anymore, but a coaching session one-on-one -on -one with a client, that connection can be so strong when you really are consciously in that moment. Yeah. And we know a lot of the flow triggers and that's exactly what they all have, uh, have in common. They drive attention to the right here, right now, because flow follows focus in order to be in flow. You need to be in right here, right now, for example, passion, purpose, risk, novelty, complexity. If you're really interested into something that's really, then we can pay more attention. So that's the, the necessary thing to, to really drop into that state. And you mentioned it, that's what, what I'm really, maybe even one of the most excited things about, it's like this ability to interreception, mindfulness, and it's very, very closely related to, to dropping into the flow state. And that's what mindfulness really helps improve, like really doing the scanning and then seeing like, where am I, am I with my body? It increases the capacity, the capacity to feel these things. Is there some tension? Is there some anxiety? Like that's, I really love from Tara Brach. Tara Brach, she's like a mindfulness meditation teacher and she has the, the RAIN framework. Recognize, allow, aware, be aware and allow it. Investigate and nurture. So recognize and, and the thoughts, we are, it's, it's pretty clear. So you just see it, then you allow it and you accept it. But then the investigation part is where many people drop up and the investigation doesn't mean 
I don't feel good because in my childhood I had this, but it's really like just getting into the body and feeling how does this thought, how does it correlate with my body? How does it make, makes me feel? And then on top of that, you bring the nurturing part. You bring the, the loving kindness of attention um, because that's what then heals these things. So that's why meditation is really essential if you want to drop into the flow state because you foster that interoception because in the end, the body, it's so much of our knowledge is in the body there. They're crazy experiments. For example, they had like rigged one of the experiments that I really like. They that card deck, and there were like four different decks with penalties where you could win, uh, where you could lose money or win money. So two different cards, four decks, and I think two of them had much more of the the cards that would give you money. Two of them had much more penalties. And over the time, they had a, a sensor where they uh, nourish, um, where they measured the the electric. What's it called? If, if you sweat the electric, um, so light fish kind of the germ. The electrolyte. The, the electrolyte, the, the, so it increases. Sweat, so basically yeah. you're sweating a little bit and then okay. I can see, ah, it's a pathetic revelation. And I could see that that happened. Like the body recognizes, ah, these are the decks where it's more often the penalty. And the body was much, much, much faster to recognize this pattern. And then the participants over time deviated to choosing the decks where the, the, the reward was more often, but that was much earlier. And even in the end, they couldn't consciously explain it, but it was just the response from their body when they were trying to pick a deck from that, the card from that deck, their body was like saying, ah, it's, it's maybe not the best idea. So it's just one example how it's really one of the core skills we can do as entrepreneurs in terms of high performance, really beginning to nourishing our body and then also listening for, from our body it's it's connected because if you can listen to your body you also nourish it better take care of it and then use that wisdom to combine it with the kind of left brain analytic thinking which we have plenty of in our world either way so fostering this yeah. combination is maybe one of the most powerful things this is interesting as well like something i've been looking at recently is the human design uh, and just looking at um, this is where you sort of put in your date of birth and where you were born um, and your and, and various things and the algorithm will look at look at it and look at the human design matrix to tell you and it's based on like planetary positions and things. I don't fully understand it. It's something I'm pretty new to, but it's very interesting when you start to look at the personality type in terms of whether you are like a generator or a manifesto generator um, or, or some of the others It's really, really interesting. Um, with the, uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, the lion's mane, okay, which, which helps to with BDNF and, and nerve growth factor. What do you take in terms of, are there specific nootropics that you find that you use or on certain days, like stepping away a bit from the plant medicine and things that people can access more readily? Um, what, what have you been using yourself and with clients for, for helping, uh, really inform and enhance those mental states? Yeah, maybe the most important thing is cycling. So I'm always try for, for most of the supplements. Some are super safe, but in general, I find it always good to, to cycle these things and not take them every day for like months and months and months. But yeah, truly really see. And then from there, yeah, just looking here, it's really a wide range. So one of the basics that I really love is L-tyrosine because it's an amino acid, super safe, helps increasing dopamine. So that um, boosts focus. For, for the evening, things like taurine. I'm I'm really big fan of taurine. Helps mm -hmm. with anxiety, with stress, with relaxation. Um, L-theanine, which is also, I think many people know it, which is calm, focus. The, the combination, especially in terms of caffeine, is naturally found in green tea. But if you're drinking coffee, L-theanine can be a great addition. And from, from there, like slowly going up in terms of the focus, uridine monophosphate is a very powerful one, which helps with dopamine, helps with focus. Also, especially I'm working with a lot of like ADHD kind of entrepreneurs. And if you have used stimulants, like harder stimulants, like medication stimulants, Adderall, Ritalin, some of them over a long time, they can wear out your dopamine receptors. And uridine is actually a compound that can help restore some, some of that sensitivity. So it, it's very amazing. Which one? Um, uridine monophosphate. Uridine, okay. That's. Uh... And you take that what in the morning? Yeah. 
that's in the morning you can also it's i think it's half life it's like three to four hours so you can take it two maybe three times a day but for me i'm very sensitive so that's also one thing that i would be very um, very aware of always with clients who's checking them many even with coffee they're not aware that if they drink a coffee in the afternoon it often impacts the sleep quality because mm. the half-life of caffeine is very, very high and with an aura ring you see the difference but maybe if you don't especially if you don't have that big bodily awareness and perception you might not notice it and that's the, the vicious cycle that's especially if you use a lot of stimulants like ADHD um, people harder stimulants then your sleep gets worse maybe even you can't sleep and then you have to take benzos or other harder things to fall asleep that's the worst combination and then the next day you have to take more or the same amount or harder stimulants so, so uridine is an amazing one and uridine you would take what, when you're feeling like you've got scattered thinking effectively and you want to focus the mind a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's Did exactly you mention it. creatine as well? Did you say you no. take creatine? No. No, I didn't mention it yet, okay. but I, it's definitely a good one, which I, I started taking from like physical bodybuilding world. It's very common mm. there because it's helps ATP, it helps with especially fast force production. But more recently, there's been more and more studies that's becoming more and more aware that also help with the energy production in the brain. With, with focus so creatine is definitely and also especially when you're sleep deprived as well creatine mm. i find mix, mixing just like you know if you're fasting in the morning and you want to kind of maintain that concentration just having which doesn't provide too much of a bump uh, some essential mm. amino acids with creatine can help really enhance that focus the other thing i found i don't know if you've used is uh phosphatidylcholine i find is really like really good for enhancing mental focus particularly most particularly i'd say when my brain's getting a little bit tired. So like on a Friday, like today, and I think, no, I really, because I want to bring it every day. Uh, so then I find uh, phosphatidylcholine really helpful. Yeah, choline is definitely super helpful. For me, I haven't used it so much recently, but I use a lot of eggs, eat a lot of eggs. So then again, getting it that way, yeah. nutrition is maybe the most important or most, most powerful supplements. Like B vitamin B complex, for example, is great for energy, but you can also mm -hmm. just eat some, some liver. And uh, same effect, like I really was surprised the first time when I really noticed it consciously. Another one, which I maybe is a little bit more out there, it's called Bromanthane, which is, comes from Russia, has been developed yeah. there for like elite athletes, for soldiers. It's a, the first synthetic adaptogen. And what makes it very unique, it's not addictive, it's not habit forming, it doesn't increase dopamine directly, but it works on increasing the upregulates the enzyme that produces dopamine and also increases serotonin. And what's very so that's very, so is it up, up regulating the comp gene effectively? It upregulates. I the forgot the name. Enzyme. Because it, what's enzyme. interesting is I find like when I'm looking at people's genetics, which I do a lot, if you look at the comp gene and the way that they process dopamine in the brain, mm. some people are, uh, and they've done a lot of studies on the military with this, where some people are um, a warrior with an O, they're on that end of the spectrum, and then other people are a warrior with an A, and then you've got people who are a mixed type. And I find the people who are a warrior with an A, they're processing it that much faster, so it's not hanging around. So they've got less mm. issues with things like rumination and anxiety, but at the same time, they almost need self-imposed deadlines and pressures, mm. and they respond extremely well under pressure. Um, I think I was chatting actually, Lucas Aon and I were chatting uh, mm. about <laughs> Bromanthane on, on a podcast together, because I think it helps someone like that, like myself actually, and I, I'm keen to try it. What, what dosages are you using Bromanthane? It's pretty low, like it depends on if you use it sublingually, sublingually or orally, but the dosage in general is like between 20 or 100 milligrams. Um, and okay. where, where is that coming from? The Varia comp gene analysis? The comp gene, yeah. The comp gene it lo it looks at the way you process mm. uh, dopamine. So it's quite interesting because actually those individuals as well, they're almost mm. more likely to take on too much because they, they have that ability and that capacity and so potentially more vulnerable to, um, to burnout. Um, how easy is it to get bromanthine, uh, bromanthine at the moment with uh, with what's going on with Russia? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. <laughs> There's actually still used as a medication called ladestin, uh, ladestin, and used for example low fatigue for for different things. So that's the nice thing. It's not not super uh, super sketchy research chemical right now. It's, it's still quite easy, I think. Science .bio is one of the the websites, but they're actually in the process of of shutting down. So if you want yeah, to try I saw it, that. I saw that. right, it might, after they shut down, might become more difficult because yeah. there's, there's at least there's the only reliable source. Why are I they shutting, shutting down? I was looking at that the other day. 
they're saying like regulations is the the okay. the thing. So I guess anywhere else that you're you're getting uh, these new shepherds from? No. No, I, I'm either way. I'm in Europe, so for me, I use this website, which basically imported from them. So especially in Portugal with the customs, it's very, very. Things. But then two, two, which I actually I'm super excited about, but haven't tried them yet. It's it's Kava, which mm -hmm. I have at the yeah. uh, the the customs right now from the from the state because again it's natural, but it's kind of an not necessarily alcohol replacement, but some people use it as if you want to you just because it reduces anxiety, it helps you feel more more relaxed, more calm. So that's one that I'm really excited about trying out because again, like I really gravitate more and more towards natural things. Although they're not necessarily always better, but it's, it's, it's a combination of, of the multitude of components that you have. Mm. It's really powerful. So it's Carver and what was the other one? You said there were two that you were excited Carver about. And, and Canna, Skelethium, which is also a natural one, which, which is basically a little bit MDMA-like in its, in its effect. So it really boosts mood, also works on serotonin in terms of boosting, but, uh, boosting, but it doesn't have like the, the harsh downside and the, the effects of that MDMA. So it's more gentle, more and more contained from what I hear. And then again, what I'm excited about doing is using then this component and for example, combining it with body work, with meditation, with, with breath work, with different practices so that you really take the, the most out of the, the substance mm. itself because it's always more important if you have the, the behavioral and the intention that's maybe also even we know about the placebo effect so if you take someone with the clear intention with the clear boundary into a framework a, a plan that's always it's always more powerful and if you just in substance and you have this um, this mindset of yeah i will taking this exogenous compound and it helps me do this or that if you are mindfully with that if you are have this intention and really connect with the substance. That's maybe one of the things I also learned from the way the traditional work with plant medicines. They really have respect for the plant. They treat it with respect. It's you go there, it's medicine. You you receive it and you really mindfully connect with that in the ceremony. If you sit there, if you first sit there and it's really some time and just there sitting with it, accepting and allowing it into your body. So maybe this respect and this belief in the healing that's going to take place. It's definitely an essential component in, mm. yeah, not only there, but, but every, everywhere. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It's our connection. Uh, mm. The plants are basically opening up that, that pathway for us. We should be grateful for that. Um, what about at nighttime? Do you have a specific routine, like a sleep stack or relaxation stack that you do or protocol, maybe not even the supplements, but things that you do to sort of wind down? Yeah. Yeah, in terms of supplements like the classic magnesium, sometimes zinc, taurine, and I really like teas, lemon balm, chamomile. And besides that, like it's just relaxation. I usually do some movement, some kind of yoga thing, which it's like very intuitive. Like, like that's where it comes. Like I don't have like a certain movement routine, but really listening to my body. Like or for example, now if you have the video, you see like just speaking about it, I already feel some tension in my shoulders and then you're moving that. So mm -hmm. some movement, then again, the re reflection before doing that, that's always important, like thinking about today, what was good, maybe the, the most important thing about that, because you mentioned it, I think it's related with that dopamine uptake again. I'm very much prone to like always needing the next stimulation, always then looking to, ah, oh, these are the things that didn't went well. These are the things that need to improve, but then rewiring your brain to thinking, ah, oh, these were the things that really worked well today. Again, being, being grateful and accepting the progress and the growth that you made toward that, then doing the reflection, what could have been better. And then also thinking about over the next day, what are the plans for that? Um, yeah. And then also like winding down, obviously. So putting away at some point the phone consciously, I'm really at the house where I'm right now. It's like a nice transition into like a upper layer. What's basically a bathroom, so read bathroom, bedroom, and really making that like a sanctuary. That's also essential for me. No phones in there, no other distractions. So that's for sleep and sex only and really wiring that connection. So really mm. sleep, something I struggled with all my life. So it's oh, really, yeah. important to get that right. Yeah, you have to work a bit harder, I think, uh, yeah. if you're someone that does struggle with sleep. And that morning light that you were talking about really, really helps mm. with that. Um, amazing. You've shared so much. Where can people come and find you, Maurice? Uh, please, please share. Yeah, welcome, welcome. The The best thing to get in touch with me is most likely Instagram on, and then my, my podcast, 
but yeah if you want to get in touch just send me a message on instagram and then i also have a free training about the, my basic work basically which is called the embedded flow strategy which can people find on yeah coaching dot i will put the link in the show notes i okay. forgot the we'll exact url well, but and, yeah. the, and the podcast is the entrepreneurial black brain right the entrepreneurial yeah. brain podcast yeah. exactly we also talk about biohacking a lot of plant medicine recently because it's been becoming a bigger passion the bigger part of my life and i really want to spread that message but also biohacking kind of stuff breath work Amazing. We will link to all of that in the show notes. Uh, it's been fun. It's been great to chat to you and, and, and explore all these areas. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Really enjoyed it. Always good to talk about these things. Definitely.